Hello all, this is Matthew Palmer, the Pro Wrestling Monster Hunter, coming at you, and today we're going to be drinking at Moe's. All right, everybody, I want to thank Reaper Apparel for having drinking at Moe's be a brand ambassador they encourage everybody to break out of that comfort zone, live their best self, which, hey, that's what got me starting the podcast. But they got great clothing, great apparel, t-shirts, hoodies, beanies, hats, all that good stuff. Be sure, link will be in the description and use the code Drinking at Moe's to get 10% off your order. Let's fucking All go. All right, everybody. Drinking at Moe's. As always, YouTube, like, subscribe, share, comment, all that good stuff because it helps with that pain in the ass algorithm over there. For most places you can find your audio podcast today, I'm excited to have with me a guy that I've met a handful of times there over at Wrestling Revolver. The Monster Hunter, Matthew Palmer, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing fantastic. How are you? Oh, I'm doing all right. I got some uh, fun things coming up, you know, this weekend, uh, you know, some family stuff, and then friend inviting me over for All In, and Ooh, you know, fun. I, know, I know you got a pretty big weekend coming up the week after oh i know. got a big weekend every weekend if oh, i'm yeah. wrestling i'm teaching somebody how to wrestle or i'm producing something or i'm even writing something up for revolver like every weekend i'm busy oh yeah i know oh. uh revolver though they got that first little bit that first weekend there in september got a big show a blue labor day weekend coming up oh yeah where... redacted forever i know that <laughs> Fortunately, with some in-laws coming into town, I won't be able to make it out to that one as much as I want to. Damn. It's going to be a good one, too. I'm oh. wrestling Dan the Dad and uh, Tyler Breeze and uh, what's been labeled as the funnest match ever. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I've I've been lucky enough to be there to see Dan the Dad on a couple of occasions and he can put on an entertaining match for sure, and then oh, you get course. you and Tyler Breeze in there. That's I don't know. Be... I don't know what I'm doing. It, you know, I don't know how, how uh, it is for most wrestlers, but usually they just get listed on a match. I get listed on a match that also has a moniker listed, like the funnest match ever. It's like, all right, you dick. Now I gotta, <laughs> I gotta go out there and have the funnest match ever. Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Why can't I just oh. have a great? <laughs> oh man yeah that that's <laughs> it's definitely <laughs> interesting now now that you bring it up i'm like you know what yeah i've i've noticed that with a lot of your matches there with revolver it's like okay yeah like i'm uh, what, what we had that we had that tag match uh it might have been a year ago by now i can't remember i get hit in the head a lot uh it was it was a uh, Strickland, it was Swerve and Lee, Keith Lee versus uh, Swan and I, and we're like, we need, we need, I want that little extra bit, that little something that you wouldn't see normally at a wrestling show, and so that's where, like, I would say maybe an hour before the show, I go up to Callahan, go, I need you to make me a video, and I get the specifics of the video down, mm. Keith mm. Lee gives me the big chop, I lie down, arms cross, in the arms of the angel plays with the R.I.P. <laughs> Matt Palmer. So, Place yeah. is losing their mind. And I'm just sitting there like gasping for air because, you know, Keith Lee just chopped my tiny ass body. And I'm just, I, <laughs> I'm just like, I was sitting in third row for that one. <laughs> yeah, awesome. What'd you think? <laughs> it was pretty epic. Came out of nowhere, that. huh? Didn't see that oh, one my. coming. You'll see oh. a million super kicks and Canadian destroyers, and everyone's got a falsy. No one's had the arms of the angel play after a chop. So. Oh, man. I just remember when I saw him do that, I'm like, oh, yeah. Ow, my yeah, chest which hurt is, just. 
it hurts just as much as it did 15 years ago when he chopped me for the first time. Like it's just like oh. I'm I'm a I'm a little bigger now. I started off like I'm really skinny still, but like I was really skinny then. And Keith Lee would put the the overhand chops on Oof. me, and you could just like see my body just go from five seven to four seven. <laughs> it was like real quick. It's like oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, but that Oof. was fun. Like every time I'm at, Re- I'm at Revolver, like that's the little twist that we're trying to do for my matches is just this little. A bit more, I don't want to say Broadway theater, but a bit more theater to it than just wrestling. Like a lot of guys, they do comedy bits and they, and they kind of suck at wrestling. I'm not the best, but I'm okay with it. Yeah. Add that with a little bit of flash and flair that you would normally see it, I don't know, Shrek the musical, then you're in for a fun <laughs> night. You know? Oh, yeah. I mean, you bring up like the whole Monster Hunter thing, it's unique because the way I've all, I put it with pro wrestling especially recently that uniqueness is kind of few and far between the monster hunter thing is definitely very unique because you you have those things attached to you and then like something happens like you need to for the lack of a better term hulk up you yeah pound one of those back and then it's like whoa yeah i I tell the guys uh breaking kayfabe here uh vince already killed it so i can do it now um I, I always tell the guys, it's like, hey, I got these, I got these potion bottles. As, and they're like, what do they do? It's like, whatever you want, man. Like, literally, whatever you want. I've had a guy die on it. I had to resuscitate Alex Shelley. Uh, I've had I've had a guy, and this is a lower level show, because I, li- I like to go to the smaller indie shows and, and kind of test them out. And I had a guy drink one, lights go out, and a completely new guy's in the ring, like a very He-Man-esque kind <laughs> of thing. And I'm just, and my character is basically Shaggy from Scooby Doo. I'm just, I'm the monster hunter, but I'm a coward. <laughs> so like, it's like, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a coward. Every monster is like huge, and I'm, I'm me. And so like, half the fun is being one of the rare chicken shit baby faces. <laughs> so like, it's like I, I love it. It's great. Um, and then you drink the potion, and if you need me to not be a coward there you go. Or if you need me to Hulk up, there you go. Or if you need me just to turn into a whole nother wrestler, fine. <laughs> I don't care. It's just like, they're just I'm a little MacGuffin to get through the angle. Oh yeah. No, it, it's, it's some epic stuff. And I definitely love getting to watch it and actually be there live. I actually, in some of my autograph stuff that I don't have displayed yet, I actually have the, event posters for the last two revolver shows i was oh, able awesome. to make it to signed and you bring up that that match with swerve and keith lee my autographed wrestling figures i have up top there and three i got signed that night one was from your partner rich swan oh and yeah the other two were swerve and keith lee didn't get mine. I don't have a figure. I'm not famous. <laughs> <laughs> but just it, it scratch out a shaggy action figure and just paint me over it. There you go. <laughs> oh, man. But it, it was kind of funny with the, the Swerve and the, the uh, Rich Swan ones because I was kind of bummed out when uh, none of those three were out there for the meet and greet before the show. So oh, I, was really like, I was like, damn it. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I turn and like less than two feet behind me, there's Rich Swan. So I'm like, oh shit. Okay. And then yeah. I I go out to my car. I'm like, okay, well, at least I got one. And then I see somebody filming a promo out in the parking lot. And, oh shit, there's Swerve. Okay. <laughs> That'll get them. How dare you be at work? Sign this. <laughs> <laughs> But I was like, you know what? I, I'm I'm going to wait back here. I, I don't want to be one of those fans that just interrupts you when you're trying to do your work and get a promo in or something. Could you, so, could you imagine, though? Hey, we only got one time. We only got a couple minutes to take this shot, uh, Strickland. Rich Swan, you piece of shit. I'll go. Oh, hey, man. Yeah. Cool. Have a good night. You mother. <laughs> you know <laughs> what I mean? This <laughs> Oh man, I love it. I love uh, Strickland could do that. Strickland's one of those guys that could just do improv, physical, verbal, doesn't matter off the top of his head. He's oh. fantastic. He's one of the nicest guys you can actually meet. Oh yeah. And it, it's funny because I've heard people say, you know, some of the 
nicest people out there in in the ring in in front of that camera you know he, they're playing those just absolute ruthless just sadistic sons of bitches mm-hmm. and yeah. swerve especially right now there with that whole mogul embassy thing that he's got going definitely very much one sadistic son of a bitch yeah yeah like well that's that's true that's like the old um that's like the old saying around uh, wrestlers is that the heels are the are the sweethearts. It's the baby faces who get all the glory and all the the love. They're actually kind of the the pricks, you know. <laughs> it's just like you know what I mean. It's like they're so used to everyone loving them, it kind of gets to their head. And mm-hmm. there's nothing worse than a uh, an egotistical young wrestler. <laughs> he, I've I've ran into my fair share of those. Well, I was one of them. I mean, I was whatever. Everyone's been a 20 year old something wrestler that's had a little bit of talent. You know, sometimes you get to your head. <laughs> yeah, you get humbled. You get humbled real quick by the bigger guys, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, before I get into a little more revolver stuff that I had in mind, I always ask everybody that comes on, what got you started as a fan? And then what got you started, you know, finally deciding to make the leap into the business? Okay, uh, as a fan, I was about four years old. Um, I was watching, I, I'm, it was a Bret Hart match. I'm pretty sure his opponent was Davy Boy. Uh, Cause I think it was during that IC title run. He had mm. uh, a first, he had two, right? Uh, anyway, it was, it was when the Davy boy was about to win it. Uh, but oh, has, that, that, that summer in slam Wembley. in Wembley. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was before then. Cause I think I'm trying, I, I'm, I'm, it's been 33 years. Uh, but anyway, I, it was a Bret Hart match and I fell in love with Bret Hart. One of my favorite wrestlers. So I was about four at the time and just having just that standard white meat baby face hero uh was like you know right up my alley as a little kid when i decided to get into wrestling though i had uh i had been managing a wendy's for a few years i lied about my age and got some extra work while i was in high school eventually became a manager and eventually wanted to just hang myself from the ceiling you know what i mean it was just like i'm 19 years old and i've been working this job since i was 14 uh, and just like, oh, great. I get to work 70 hours a week flipping burgers. And then one day, a buddy of mine took me to PCW, Professional Championship Wrestling. Really exciting name. Uh, over in Arlington, Texas. And I saw Lance Hoyt or uh, Lance mm. Lance Archer. And uh, he had a commercial for his school. About three days later, I joined the school. About three months later, I quit the job at Min- uh, Wendy's. And I've just been wrestling ever since. I'm obviously picking up odd jobs, indie wrestler and all. Yeah. But I, I couldn't I, I couldn't understand. Like I had I had gone through, through this trap of uh work all these extra hours, go to all these all these school classes that you don't care about. And then I was like, what am I doing? It's the one thing I've liked. The one thing I've liked since I was four years old is wrestling or, or entertainment, essentially. Yeah. And I was like, I gotta get out of here. I can't be behind a damn grill or on a headset. Every time it's like 30 seconds, there's a beep in your ear and you gotta you know get yelled at by somebody. So yeah. so like that's that's what happened. I, I Lance Hoyt, I started training with him. About two, three months later, I was wrestling on shows. I had uh, another trainer by the name of Robert Evans. You mm-hmm. might know him from uh, Barrister R.D. Evans. He's a writer for uh, Impact. He's the writer that got fired for uh, that uh, Bret Hart promo at the Hall of Fame. Uh, uh-huh. like, That's my guy. <laughs> it's like, I love that guy. Wasn't <laughs> <laughs> his fault. Those guys are morons. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, no, that's I got, how I got into it. That that's that's awesome. I I love hearing how everybody got in because there's that term mark that gets used a lot, and it's like everybody that gets into the business at some point or another was that fan that just fell in love with it. Sure. Yeah. Like no one's getting into this, and it's like I do not love this. I hate this. I'm gonna go do this for 300 days a year and fall down for a living. Like you, you'll get the football player who's probably already rich, and he's like, you'll get your Goldbergs who shows up and they do work, or you get your Lesnar and they show up and they do their work. I'm sure there's some passion behind it, but very rarely are you gonna get somebody that's like, I hate this. Day one, I hate it. I can't wait to retire at the Hall of Fame. <laughs> so you know, what I mean? so they don't <laughs> yeah. last. They don't last. Oh yeah, and I mean, I remember growing up, and I mean little before the match that you were remembering, but I remember 
growing up and seeing guys like this was towards the end of unfortunately Bruiser Brody's run, but I remember watching him, watching guys like my personal favorite because I'm such a big fan of tag team wrestling, the Road Warriors. Oh and yeah, seeing yeah. those guys come out with them spiked shoulder pads, and I'm like, oh my god, they yeah. are the coolest thing ever. And they're massive. They're like six four, maybe like maybe six four, six five. I can't remember exactly how tall, but they're huge. They're football oh. players or ball players, you know. Oh, and like just wide as hell. Like they oh, yeah. sit through my doorway. No, oh, no, yeah. spikes making them even bigger. Face paint, mohawks, <laughs> like riding Harleys. And I was oh, like, yeah. yeah, those guys are cool as shit. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> how can you not be cool as shit? Oh, God. Yeah, no, that was. Meanwhile, I'm was... here, five foot seven with a little Victorian era jacket. Like, yeah, <laughs> hey, look at me. You're <laughs> 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 these massive dudes. Oh, man. Yeah. No, but and I've, I've been lucky enough to actually get to meet a few of my favorites recently. Of, some guys pretty massive in and of themselves. Like, oh, God. I remember I, hell, you brought up uh, Lance Hoyt, Lance Archer. I got to meet him at Warrior Wrestling when they went to St. Louis. Oh, yeah. I got I got invited to be a part of the Fan Fest. And then another match that night that I actually got to talk to one of them for the podcast. But I actually got a little chat with both of them outside of it. But it was Jeff Cobb. Versus Jonah, aka Bronson Reed, oh, yeah. massive. And, oh my God! Like I was close enough in that match that, like, you could see when those two chopped each other, individual beads of sweat just flying off, and it's like, oh my God! Yeah. I had to wrestle a four way years ago. Might have been a five. I can. There's a million people. Any any time that I'm in a match, they try to shove 38 guys that look like me in there, but. uh but this on this occasion, I was wrestling Masada, Jeff Cobb, Sammy Guevara, and I want to say ACH at the mm. time. And it was years and years ago. And Jeff Cobb is before the show going, hey, can I do this to you? And I think it was like a toss up half. That, that thing where he goes halfway to a body slam and goes. The other yeah, way. I can't remember what it is. And basically, I just had to look at the dude and go like, dude, look at us. You can do whatever you wanted to me. What am I going to say? <laughs> so like, it's like, are you going to catch me? Yeah, go ahead. Whatever you want, dude. So, what am I going to say? Whoa. Nah, Jeff, you can't do that one uh, move where you lift up the guy. Well, come on. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but sweetheart, sweetheart of a guy. Oh, totally. He's a barrel of muscles with tree trunk legs. You know what I mean? It's just... Yeah. And same with Bronson. I, I've never met him on a personal level. I've seen him and waved at him at shows. But just the same thing. Everyone tells me he's a sweetheart of a guy and just oh. massive. Like, he could throw everyone through a wall. Oh, God, yeah. yeah. The, him and Jeff Cobb just being able to throw each other around the way that they did was just a sight to behold in and of itself. Oh, yeah. And, yes, both guys – absolute nicest i got nothing but great things to say about them my episode with the jonah bronson reed was shorter than most but it, he was nice enough to like literally in between when the fan fest ended and then when he needed to go back and actually get start getting his gear and stuff on we had a little block of time right in there and i'm like for the rest of my trip i'm like holy crap i actually got to make that happen. that's i mean that's that's amazing i mean because like a lot of times and i'm just speaking as as me as a wrestler it's a lot of times we just see ourselves as regular guys we're just looking around going hey what's up man and, the, and behind the counter and there'll be someone's like oh, i'm so excited to meet you and i'm just like why <laughs> it's just like i mean yeah that's great man it's just like, you know what I mean? so i'll have full-on conversations with fans i had a couple of fans that are just like kind of like nervous and a little anxiety and i'm just like why guys come it, i'm the same as you man i'm just gonna put on a little makeup in 20 minutes and and, and wrestle in front of you. It's just, no, no big deal come on oh yeah like i've definitely had guys that i've met throughout even before the podcast and you know oh one that comes to mind in particular that I met that like when I was just in the line, I'm like, the guy looked intimidating as hell. Dan Sever. Oh like, yeah. I've never I met, met Dan Sever. I got to meet him once. And it's like in the line, I'm like, Oh my God, he is so intimidating. And then you get to talking to him. 
coolest dude ever. Yeah, because like you got to think like those guys like Don Fry, Dan Severn, like they could kill you and they know it. And so like why be mean? <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah. you, know, you know what I mean? Why? I get uh, one or two shots and you're done. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to be smiling and nice to you. Like it, it's the best part. It's usually the ones that are projecting that are like dicks. You know, it's like you, you can't it, fight. You know, yeah. <laughs> so, I, I actually did something similar to Oh, the one guy that was in that show, Modern Family, that he was acting all pissed off, and like the next person he's he sees, he's gonna punch him, and then here walks behind Brock Lesnar. Yeah, I yeah. did something similar to that with with Dan Severn. It was hilarious. <laughs> and then and he Lesnar's like tapped me on the shoulder. I'm like, <laughs> Lesnar's one of those dudes that's like. I remember being a kid and sitting in the American Airlines Center at like, you know, the cheap seats way, way in the back. And I could see every outline of his tattoo on his back. Like I could see the detail. That's how wide this dude was. <laughs> and it was just like one of those guys. It's like, he's insane. Five years later, we're doing a commercial. It's me and a bunch of other small guys doing a commercial. And in walks Big Show, Lesnar, Triple H, Edge, and Hardy. Big Show is crouching down the hallways at this like tiny NBC studio. He's like, he waves high. Cool. He's massive. Lesnar walks by and whole, it's like, I, I felt like I was a little kid again in American Airlines Center. I just saw this massive back tattoo just walking down the aisles clear as day. It's like, it's the exact same tattoo I saw from the, the nosebleeds out here. Same detail, everything. I was, and I was like, I was just looking at it going like, I don't want to fuck with that guy. <laughs> like the, the entire time. It's like, that guy is a monster. <laughs> no, yeah. Like, I know. I I have people that, like, I don't get starstruck too easily, but I definitely have those that it's like, there's a couple in particular but that, like, I don't know if I'd be able to get a word out. Brock Lesnar might be one of them, but I've I've seen some nicer moments from him just definitely don't like you got to gauge if he's in a good mood or not right. right right i doubt he's rude all the time but i can guarantee that he probably wants to be left alone all the time <laughs> like he's, yeah he seems like the ultimate introvert i get it i get yeah it. my my other one though stone cold steve austin really literally if i gotta meet him i don't know if i'd be able to get a word out I mean, I can I can see it. That was like the guy. That's you know yeah. what I mean. Like I get oh, it. Oh yeah, You're a wrestling it's, it's, fan. That's the guy. Oh yeah. For for me, it's like he literally my all time favorite. And it's like I I think of it like I built him up so much in my head that it's like if I ever got to meet him, actually got to meet him, I don't know what I would be able to do. Right. I think all you can do is say hi and. High five and move on, really, at that point. Like, what, do you, what can he say? It's like, oh, my God, you're my hero. You're my guy. You're, like, yeah. the coolest wrestler ever. I wanted to kill my boss because of you. You know what I mean? Just, <laughs> <laughs> just like. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, man, it'd, be, it'd be some. And the, the thing with Revolver going back there that I'm liking, talking about all these big names, is not only are they bringing in some of the people from, all over that have been, you know, and are contracted on national TV promotions, but even there's been some that might not be involved in the show, but you get there and they have people like, oh boy, I remember Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Yeah, like sighting. that's the beauty of Callahan, uh, is that he's trying to like not only give you a show, of course, but he's trying to give you a good show beforehand. It's like obviously Lex Luger's not gonna wrestle, but you still want to meet him, right? Yeah. Come to the show where you can watch three hours of badass wrestling. You get to meet Lex Luger, Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Ah, I can't remember who I sat next to him the other the other show, and I can't remember who the hell it was. I know he Slayer was there, but he Slayer ended up actually there. being oh. in the show. Yeah, I remember that it was it was it was an uh, older fella, 
Uh, but I was sitting next to Luger. Luger, I love Luger. I, I always, I always love Luger. I don't know why people gave him shit back in WCW for like, oh, I don't know how to work. It's like he's doing just as well as you guys. I don't get it. Um, and so like, I, I love Luger. I love, I love Lex Express. I love Slam and Yoko. I love the narcissist. So I'm sitting next to Luger the entire time. I was like, it's the guy right there, you know. Only only Brett was better than Luger at the time when I was a kid. <laughs> it was, it was just, <laughs> but yeah, man, Callahan wants to put on a show. He wants to, and like even afterwards, we're trying to figure out ways to, to like continue it on after the show, right? We we want we want people to leave. We want them to leave with like one last little fun exit. You know what I mean? So we're trying to figure that out. But that dude, that dude knows how to produce quality independent wrestling because half the oh. time you'll get. 12 guys that look like me uh, all over the card. You'll get one name. They'll be wrestling the 13th guy who looks like me. And that's it. You know what I mean? This dude goes in there. It's like, oh, you here's Alex Shelley. Here's Keith Lee. We got hacks all over at the signing booth. We got Tyler Breeze on deck. We got a dude who plays a man scout who's about to wrestle a tent. And I guarantee it sounds stupid because it is. But it's going to be the most entertaining match on the entire mm. card, and that's not selling the other ones short. Yeah, you got, you got Lince Dorado, you got uh, uh, Ortiz coming, you got all these guys who are like the best of the best, and then you got a tent, you got a dude in makeup that's taking potions, fighting monster Keith Lee. You know what I mean? It's just <laughs> everything is fun. And if you look at these other indie shows, not the crap on them, because everyone has their own style and own flavor and stuff yeah. like that. But it, it's it seems like it's on a different level the second you walk in. Yeah. Oh yeah. I I was definitely thinking that because the the handful of the last ones that I've been to, I remember talking with uh, Sean T for the podcast. I had him on a while oh, yeah. back, and we talked about Revolver. It's like a party atmosphere the whole damn time you're yes. there, especially yes. during the show, because I I can't remember too many other places and shows that I've been to where one of the crazier moments I've ever witnessed was one of my first ever what I call legit death matches and not just like the hardcore that gets yeah. death match slapped on there. Yeah. But Jake Chris versus Joel Bateman at Revolver. Well, that's just Jake Chris is the man. Jake Chris is one of the toughest bastards I've ever met. And I, I can't bastards not even it's too mean of a word to say for Jake Chris. Jake Chris is a sweetheart as well, but that's the oh, toughest totally. sweetheart I've ever seen in my life. Oh yeah. And God, the ending of that match was just insane. And I don't know anywhere else where everybody would just be on their feet like they just saw the greatest thing ever. Where yeah. like the the four folding chairs and then the glass and then Bobby comes in with the lighter fluid. And I'm just like, I'm on my feet and my jaw on the floor. Like, Holy shit. Yes. Yeah. And that's, that's another beautiful thing about a revolver and Callahan is he has the death matches. You're a Midwest fan. Most likely you're on a touch of death matches, right? That's just the nature of it. I'm a, I'm a Texas guy and you'll get a few decks death matches, but they like that more like, kick punch just bar fight scrap you know what i call it i yeah. call it texas strong style where you're not really te technically savvy but you're just smacking the hell out of each other the midwest sammy's smart he puts the death match in there but he doesn't make the whole show death matches where people are stepping on each other's toes doing the same stuff because there's yeah. only so many there's only so many glass tubes and panels and stuff you go through before it's like this is a car wreck but it's the same car wreck i saw 20 minutes ago you know what i mean yeah and so like, he puts the best of the best on there for that. Like Jake Chris, you're not going to outdo Jake Chris in a death match. I don't think there's, oh, there's oh, very oh. few. I, I would put any CZW star up against Jake Christ. And I think Jake would win the match hands down, not match, but like the quality of content. No, to totally. And I actually had him on the podcast shortly after the video he released of him burning the IW Fire mid South star, belt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where that whole thing came up, and man, we had a great talk about all that. I I joke about it how I how I brought up to him about coming on as it being like uh, Paul Heyman when he convinced Stone Cold to go to ECW, where it's mm -hmm. like you got a grievance, I got a show, let's air it. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I bet Sammy was probably probably like, why don't you just burn it on my show? And so <laughs> I, I pitched an idea after after uh, 
yeah. after Sammy had sent me that video, or maybe Jake said, I, I saw the video. And uh, right after I had pitched it, it's like, can I do a spoof of it where I accidentally set the revolver title on fire thinking it's another title? And let's just run back into the fire. Like, oh, shit, 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 wrong one, wrong one, shit. Like, Sammy <laughs> didn't watch that. He was like, you're not going to throw it You're not going to light my belt on fire. I'll buy a new strap. It's fine. No. <laughs> so. Yeah. And things just keep getting bigger and bigger for revolver. Mm-hmm. Because I know this uh, just a week or two away Jake Chris again going up against Alex Cologne in a no row barbed wire. That's going to yeah. be insane. And if I, I was putting over Jake Chris as one of the best deathmatch guys, Alex Cologne right up there with him. Mm-hmm. Alex oh. Alex has a way like a lot of guys. It seems like, and this isn't everyone. This isn't every deathmatch wrestler. It's just something I notice is that the transitions between different segments of the match spots are uh, lazy. You know what I mean? I'm going to walk over here. I'm going to pick up this chair. I'm going to throw it at you. Okay, you stay there. Uh, I'm going to walk over here and pick up this thing. And I'm going to throw it at you. Whereas, like, they add the wrestling transitions and flows between here and here and here. Oh, we need to get to that table spot. It's over here. Let's uh, let's go and dabble with this ladder over here. Screw around with it. Set it all up. You'll forget about it. We'll deal with these chairs over here after we work the little yep. Rana spot over here. And then there we go. We're perfect for the spear into the table. And then when we're done with that falsy, we'll work around over here. And then boom, there's that ladder we forgot about five minutes, ten minutes yep. ago. You know what I mean? And they 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 make it flow so well. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Not I've, to I've, not to go behind the scenes on wrestling too oh, much. Oh no. I've actually talked all know with about it. the both of them and with another big deathmatch guy john wayne murdoch you yeah. talk about deathmatch wrestling when it's done right in the in ways like you were mentioning it's basically just regular deathmatch regular pro wrestling surrounded by the deathmatch elements where you got the story where like yeah you got all those weapons but then you don't go right for the big one you yes. go and you kind of throughout the match just ramp it up like okay i start with this and then we go through here and then bam there's another weapon and then it just ramps up as you go and then that's the way i love it yeah i mean well that's the way it should it should be done right you don't want it to make it look like you're just going from one to the next because if you just translate that from uh light tubes and chairs and all that stuff just to regular wrestling goes okay we're here's here's a canadian destroyer all right and here's a power bomb what are, what's the finish uh clothesline mm. yeah really? <laughs> you know what i mean and like it, there's no proper flow there's no proper build up you don't have time to show the emotion of the guy who's just worn down and beat the shit and that last burst of heroic mm. energy that last little bit of ah, fuck it i'm gonna go out swinging it's just here's a move, here's a move, here's a move, and here's a here's a lesser move that's the finish, or here's something that goes into your head. And, oh, it hurts so bad. If if I didn't see the previous four matches do that same thing, you know. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I don't I don't want to. It sounds like <laughs> no, really no. shouldn't death match wrestling. I don't. I like I like a bit of it. I'm not I'm not a huge fan, yeah. but I'm also a wuss. I couldn't do any of it. I would oh, do that yeah. fake uh, death match stuff, that hardcore, and I just lie saying it's a death match. <laughs> yeah. No, th- I mean, it's a good point, because if you have, like, just every single match, and that's all that it is, it can be like, okay, I just saw that, like, 20 minutes ago. Why am I, why wow. do I care now? Many, many, many guys could put on an entire show of deathmatch wrestling and have it vary. Many, many could. Most don't. Yeah. It. Yeah. And, you know, we, we bring up Alex Cologne, another item that I actually have here that I got from him, yeah. signed ring-worn kick pads. When did you get that? At the last one he had? The last death match? The, um, fuck, what was it? Who did he this, wrestle? This was like, oh, God, it's been over a year ago that I had yeah. him on. When we were ending, we were talking a little bit after we got done recording, he was talking about uh, wanting to invest in some new kick pads. And I'm like, how much are you wanting? And he said, make me an offer. Hell yeah. And nice. boom. Now I have them. I'm just waiting to get something to display them on. Now, another thing that uh, Revolver and, you know, they have been going from where it was kind of flip-flopping between Ohio and Des Moines, and now they're getting out 
a little bit of everywhere. They've been down to Texas. They've mm-hmm. been uh, October fourteenth. They're coming back. I yes, know for Tales I'm of the upset. Ring, right? Yeah, I'm. I'm uh, basically like their little liaison guy for Texas because I'm the Texas guy, and so I've been. I've been trying to dabble in the backstage stuff and help him produce things more. I'm getting older, you know, and so yeah. I'm just trying to have a little bit more fun with that. And I can tell you, like any revolver show to me feels like a vacation. I'm flying however long I'm flying. I'm hanging out, handing out flyers a few days prior. And it just feels like I'm having, I'm just having a blast. It feels like I'm at home constantly with family. I haven't seen it forever. That's revolver to me. So being able to bring my family to Texas and my home and show them this area that to be honest, has kind of fallen to the wayside. Texas has been considered a black hole of wrestling for some decades now. And it's slowly popping and growing. You got mm-hmm. you got key, yeah Booker's down in Houston, which is f- uh, three days away for me. It's just forever away because Texas is huge. You got yeah. you got Brian Keith, Texas guy, who just tearing it up everywhere. You got Sammy Guevara. You got Athena. You got me. I'm not tearing it up anywhere, but I'm I'm trying. Uh, I mean, you have all of this area's talent, and then you have this market here in North Texas that I think is just ready to pop. So when yeah. we brought Revolver down. We had all these first-time customers in this area. We had a beautiful city that's investing in themselves to bring talent and entertainment to the area. We drew 500 people in a day. Like we're, It was right after 4th of July weekend, and 500 people bought tickets in a day. They were ecstatic. It, was, it wasn't like your typical indie show. It was like, oh, these are wrestling fans. You can tell that they're wrestling fans. These are just regular consumers that are losing their minds at just the first time that they've been able to see wrestling that isn't on TV. And holy crap, is live theater a lot more fun than a than an old commentator yelling in your ear while guys oh, do yeah. stuff just all, you know. Pie. Oh, yeah. And I, w- I was wanting to ask you, because I know that you've been dabbling in the, the backstage aspects of it. What is that like when you're still, you know, actively competing, managing both? Well emotionally it's unwise for most wrestlers i don't have much pride in myself as you've heard me with the self-deprecating stuff uh jokingly i try try not to put myself over in most cases right most times you'll get a guy who runs the show he owns the show and i can guarantee nine times out of ten he's probably also the champion right they're already putting themselves over i just love revolver so much that when they're like hey matt help me with this do this do this can you bring the show here can you it's like i am just so willing to help Sammy and his crew and Phil Stamper and all those guys at any, any turn with anything I can possibly do uh, that. I'm just grateful. I'm just, I'm just incredibly grateful that at 37 years old, 17 years of wrestling, um, I'm doing okay. I'm slowing down a little bit because I'm nearing 40, obviously that I have this segue into something that I love with people that I truly love in an industry that I love. And it's just, you, you know what I mean? So like, I, 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 I'm ecstatic. Now I'm ignorant to a lot of stuff. Of course, I'm I'm going from dumb wrestler to dumb producer to dumb promoter, right? But like, I can't tell you the last time I've had this much fun being able to like just, hey, what's the finish for this? What's the finish this? Let's work out this. Oh, hey, this guy canceled. That changes the angle for the main event for six months. <laughs> you know, it's like shit. Let's sit down. Let's smoke a little. Let's figure this out. You know what I mean? It's it's a blast. I feel like I'm playing my old wrestling video games with my buddies, <laughs> except these are humans. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, oh, you know what would be sick as shit? Alex Shelley versus Jake Chris. Well, then why don't we book it? <laughs> so, yeah. Hell yeah. So, that, I'm, having, I'm having a blast, dude. And like, like I said earlier, the temptation to put yourself over or put yourself in the limelight, it's not there. It's a, it, it truly it truly isn't there for me at this place because everyone there busts their ass so hard that it's hard not to just be like, yeah, give it give it to them. Oh, Damian Chambers has been killing it. Give him the spotlight. Oh, you need him to go over on somebody? Yeah, pin me. Who cares? You know what I mean? It's so much fun being able just to hear people cheer and just and groan or like when you're trying to get that little gasp of dead silence and you're like oh, you're just lying on the ground like ah oh, fucking nailed it it's like i produced that segment <laughs> you know oh, what God, i mean yeah that that chop from keith lee that little semi yeah yeah oh, or even I'll, I'll be in the backstage sitting next to, to sammy 
and just sitting there uh, in in gear, either post or pre uh, pre match, just sweating my ass off. And he's just sitting there going like, "Oh, yeah, I hope this works. I'm, I'm, it's better, it's better because it'll be great, Sammy. Watch this shit, and they'll do it. They'll get a big pop. It's like, yeah, I knew that would work. It's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like you know what I mean? <laughs> oh man, I've I've been wanting to get back up there. I know a friend of mine who was actually the best man at my wedding. Periodically, when they come to Des Moines, he's helping backstage there. Uh, Brandon Juarez. Okay, yeah, yeah. He's like a brother to me. He actually introduced me to my wife, and when it came to choosing oh. people for my uh, my groomsmen, I'm like, and who was going to be my best man? I'm like, I literally walked up to him and just said, "You earned the job. You introduced me to her." Right. Yeah, you got the referral. <laughs> you know what I mean? You get the that's that's awesome. That's hell yeah, that's awesome. So yeah, I'm I'm hoping to get to tag along with him at at some point because I've been able to help set up and stuff before for other shows. Okay. I'm like, man, I've heard how great and experienced revolver is and i've been two shows like i want to just be able to gotcha yeah, yeah. i get you so well, man, I mean, man. the day before usually that's when everything's setting up he'll probably see you going ask ah, screw it come on let's go <laughs> so you gotta set up a ring i don't give a shit <laughs> yeah, i've done it before oh, yeah. well i have two categories that i kind of round stuff off with here Okay. First one's a bit of a name game where I try to go through past matches, past cards that you've been on, and you know, pick somebody that I hope I can remember at them. least shared a ring with, if not, you know, at the very least shared a locker room with. Okay. And you give me first little thought that pops in your head when you hear the person. Okay. I'll do the best I can. First one, a guy that's tearing it up with Impact Wrestling right now, Moose. <laughs> He's a sweet guy. Uh, a little, uh, little backstory on Moose. We we're playing uh, some card game, some superhero game where basically... He chooses uh, two cards, I choose two cards, or somebody else chooses two cards. And you compare if they would win in a fight. He gets a, a character and a weapon. He got a cheetah with uh, the uh, tuxedo from the movie Tuxedo. Uh, I got the literal god and an, the elder wand from Harry Potter. And he had to sit there and argue for about 90 minutes about how this <laughs> cheetah could sneak up on God. <laughs> And then the same night, he just in the middle of nowhere, like we're just we're just watching some wrestling. And it's like Ricochet's in the room and like Strickland's there and Sam is there. It's just a, it's a big we're, we're all smoking and hanging out and we're just watching wrestling. And just out of nowhere, Moose, hey, what if dinosaurs were just big dogs? <laughs> so, and we're like, ah, fuck this show. We're just to turn that off. And we all look at Moose like, go on, man. Tell us the rest of this. <laughs> <laughs> sweetheart sweetheart uh, a little bit of conspiracy theorist <laughs> <laughs> that who is... else you got oh man that, that's a good one now next person somebody that's you know they're there with revolver they're there with uh gcw okay alley catch defiant I'm going to say defiant. I, I watched uh, Ali Catch basically um, start wrestling in Texas years and years ago at a place called Inspire, Inspire Pro in Austin. She had wrestled other places and, and been around a little bit before then, but I saw her and like she was coming into her own. She was Ali Cat. She was a cat, a human furry kind of gimmick. And um, then she kind of went up to St. Louis in the Midwest, and I, I, I lost touch of of uh, her wrestling and lost track. We weren't very close ever, but 
Then I see her at Revolver, and she's Allie Catch now. Now she's covered in blood. She's ripping off her mom's leg, uh, her uh, prosthetic leg, and beating Callahan <laughs> with it. And it's just the entire time. I and I was even one of these people. I'd give I'd give her some advice that probably just wasn't the advice for her. And she and she just got all this advice and all this stuff that just didn't work for her. And defiantly, just kind of said fuck it and did her own thing. And she's doing incredible now. She's her wrestling is is far and away better than it ever has been. Her character work, her willingness to kind of like show depth of character through facial expressions and body movements rather than just sacrificing those moments to rest just to put another wrestling hold on is 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 excelled in a way that I didn't think was possible for her. And she is just defiant to the end. Like, like I said earlier, like she will do it her way. It's not going to step on anyone's toes, not being a dick about it, but she's going to do it her way. And that's pretty cool shit. Oh, most definitely. I've been a fan. I know I love watching uh, her and Effie there when the stuff they do in Effie's GCW, awesome. the, Effie's the stuff they did, uh, believe it was this last weekend with the, the homecoming show that they did. She had a, some stuff there that I'm like, okay, I, I heard them coming out. I'm like, okay, I'm putting this down and I'm going to pay attention to this. Yes. yes. I wrestled, uh, I wrestled Effie a year or so ago in a match. And I had uh, my, I was still trying to play with my, my music at the time. And I won the match and ABBA's uh, gimme, gimme, gimme a man after midnight came on. And after I beat him, we're both sucking wind. Uh, we're just, <laughs> He looks over at me and goes, that's the gayest music I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, shut the fuck up, man. You can't make me crack right now. <laughs> <It's just> like... <laughs> All right. Who, who's next? Who's next? What's the word association? Next one. Guy that's held the Revolver World title and held. Same with Impact. Steve Macklin. Tough bastard. Just tough bastard. You you want to talk about somebody that could just no military equipment. He probably doesn't even need the rifle. He'll just charge in headlong. You know what I mean? That's that dude. You know what I mean? Like you'll get wrestlers who are badasses and they're all badasses. But you get another level of badass when you're out of the ring and just shit's going down. And he's the first one nose to the grindstone right there the entire time i remember oh, watching him chug like four uh scoops of uh pre-workout before a match and i saw him beat the fuck out of the guy in the ring and i was like hey man please don't take any of that when you're wrestling me <laughs> <laughs> and he comes back he's covered in blood you could see the welts already on him and he's just walking through he was like hey how you doing guys <laughs> 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 oh that's insane yeah he's but I, can, I can definitely tough. see that with him though definitely tough now dude. and he's another dude that's coming to his own like oh, he totally had all the training and he, he did really well while he's an xt but you can just see on the indies how he gets to be a little bit more of himself and mm. just show truly just how much of a badass that guy is oh yeah most definitely now we've Talked a little bit about this guy, and I mentioned I was there for this epic moment that we had when he chopped you, Keith Lee. Quiet, introverted. Yeah, maybe maybe just doesn't like me. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Keith's always been reserved to himself. Um, uh, you, you'll always catch him reading a book, but I'm gonna, I'm going to say mostly um, reserved. He le- he leaves it for the performance. Yeah. You know what I mean in the ring, but once he goes to the back, he's he's polite, he's quiet, he he uses his uh his giant words that we're all just kind of like, what, he, what what's that mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, hey man, just read your manga. I don't know what that word means. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> but uh, oh yeah, guy I've known for the majority of my career. Um, he's a mutual friend with another close friend of mine, uh, J D Griffey. Ah and, yes, and he has just I've never seen Keith. I've never seen Keith be disrespectful or I've never even seen him raise his voice. I've seen him calm people down. I've seen uh, because there was an incident where a a random security guard at the uh, the, what what do they call it at at the Des Moines show, whatever the building is. I can't remember Um, the current one. Uh, 
he just came to the back and he was cussing and swearing, like blah, 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 blah. And Keith is leaning on a door frame, talking to somebody, and just goes, Hey, not here. And that guy's like, <laughs> just, and just like walks out. And I was like, Yeah, I would too. If Keith, if Keith is so just calmly just leaning, there's 300 pounds of muscle and athleticism, and just looks over going, No. I was like, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yep. <laughs> Whatever you oh, say, my- we threw that wall. Oh, yeah. I, I remember the, I think it was that show that, you know, that chop moment that I was actually waiting outside of the venue for a, a little while because uh, Swerve had told me that he was still there and I had his figure to get that I wanted signed. So I'm like, oh, heck, I just sat there for a little bit and dude, totally quiet and but nice as hell. Yeah, he hasn't. He's another one. One of those guys. Like we were talking about Severn, and then like he doesn't have to be rude. He can be nice all day long, and if you irritate him, he'll just pick you up and throw you to the next county. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like whatever, dude. Oh yeah, that that. No, oh, you talk about a moment like that. I remember when he, uh, oh that viral video from him and Adam Cole's NXT days, where Adam Cole's right by the the guardrail. And here comes Keith Lee and just <laughs> yeets yes. into the crowd. You know, I like that's a that's a good gif. I love I love that meme. But my favorite one is the Adam Cole into the corner, and Keith just kind of stands up like <laughs> like out of nowhere, like he just pops up behind him and just snags him. That's oh. my favorite one. I love sending that to friends of mine. Oh, <laughs> that's my favorite. Oh one. god, that that's another epic one for sure. Now I have some random questions okay. some might be wrestling related some might not be okay you give me first answer that pops into your head okay first one one of the only ones i keep in here for the most part because <laughs> i just i love hearing the stories craziest in match moment for you craziest in match moment <sighs> I doubt it's the craziest, but it's the first one that came to mind. I was in a match call in a, at a show called Anarchy Championship Wrestling. This could have been, I want to say, 13, 14 years ago. We're in a four team, four tag team ladder match. At some point, we're all down, and somebody goes over to me scrambling and panics, saying, Hey, Chris Wolf just broke their arm. Chris Wolf is a guy at this po- uh, at this point. This isn't the Chris Wolf, the Japanese wrestler uh, from a few years back, the, the female wrestler. Uh, this is a uh, guy, Chris Wolf. He just broke his arm. Fuck. Okay, so I get in the ring. I start. I start smacking guys. I start passing along the message. Hey, this we're changing this. We're doing this. We're doing this. I finally get to everyone. I've passed the message to everyone. I get to Chris. Everything's set up, ready to go. We'll we'll, we'll call the audible. Hey man, it just stay down. We got this. And he goes, What are you talking about? Are you okay? He goes, Yeah, you mother. So, like, so he's fine. He didn't have a broken arm at all. And I had just <laughs> proceeded to change the entire match with seven other dudes, eight dudes, including the referee. And we're all no. like, What do we do now? I was like, I don't know. I fucked up. <laughs> so like, oh, God. And so we proceed to have this match where like now, guys, we go from these other finishes. Now, Davey Vega's doing a sunset flip bomb off a ladder to me, his tag partner, so that I can give two guys a Russian leg sweep at the same time. <laughs> and just dumb shit. Now, this table spot got changed to some stupid fucking scaffold spot over. It's just, I, I uh... That was that was, it was not the wildest thing that happened to me. It's the first one that happened to, that, that came to mind. Another one was uh, a fan got into the ring. That wasn't difficult. It wasn't even one of those instances where I'm just going to kick him in the head or I'm going to suplex him. I just kind of put a knee on him. It's like, where are you going now? <laughs> it's just like, you know, <laughs> it's like he tried sliding in. I put my knee on his back. It's like, what are you doing? Somebody comes out, pulls him out, and that was it. No big deal on that one. Um, I've had rings break. Not just Ooh. the ropes, but I've had a whole corner of the ring just go whoop. Oh damn! <laughs> the owners come out yelling at us. You gotta call it. You gotta call the match. And we're like, no. It's just like <laughs> we kept doing our dumb shit because uh, we're all twenty and, and dumb, wanting to get everything over. Uh, I've had <laughs> I've had instances where I'm about to walk out to the to the uh, curtain to leave, and there's a zebra next to me. I'm just walking out, and there's just a random zebra. I'm like, what the 
and then my music plays and i'm just like going in never saw that zebra again and it was just, <laughs> just you know what i mean i've had i've had shows where tiger king is there hitting on all the dudes i've had you know it just it just it's all nuts i had a match with a uh, generico years ago it was a four-way match where he gave me a, a pretty sweet drop kick but i guess i took the t-bump wrong or whatever where his hip landed boom right on my face Ooh. next thing i know I'm in the green room staring at <laughs> Sammy Zane going, hey, man, thanks for the mats. That's great. Oh, I, you know what I mean? Oh, and I look over at my buddy going like, what the fuck happened? I don't remember anything. I was like, yeah, man, that match sucked. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what happened? It's like, I don't know, but you didn't do your stuff. <laughs> so sorry, man. That's like, funny. Too much. All right. All right. What, what's, what's uh, oh, yeah. We'll, we'll get on to the next one. Now, what is something that you like to do post match like post event to just unwind kick back have a beer whatever it might be i don't drink beer because it all tastes like piss and almonds to me but if <laughs> i um i'm usually smoking i'm usually smoking out with the boys or i'm um chugging some sort of whiskey um nah. i love whiskey um but if if it's close to home i'm going home Straight, straight home so that I can. Oh, smoke. yeah. But if we're talking like Revolver or up up north where I can't quite get home. Yeah, man, I'm just I'm smoking with the boys or I'm going to go to the hotel room and talk to my wife because half these. Like I said, I've been doing this 17 years. I'm getting old. Half these guys want to go party. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to call my wife to make sure I'm still married. <laughs> you know what I mean? That kind of shit. So that's what I do now. If we're talking like back in the day, we go up and down 6th Street in Austin. We go all over Philly. We, we would have fun right nowadays i'm chilling with the boys putting some ice pack on the joints <laughs> find a little <laughs> ben gay and then i'm hanging out where i'm playing video games i'm playing uh uh ww2k making my own characters ah. with callahan and swan nice oh god if you ever get the chance to watch swan play ww2k do it i've never seen an expert play a video game at that level it's amazing <laughs> now that brings up a good question because we've already kind of talked about a thing that like a favorite drink of yours, favorite video game that you're playing right now. Oh, I'm playing quite a few right now. Favorite, oh, favorite that I'm playing is probably Crusader Kings three. Nothing makes nothing's more boring to anyone else but me. Than just going to a medieval time setting and trying to take over the world through marriage and subterfuge and war. It's so silly. Another one I'm enjoying is Outer Worlds right now. I'm about to start that Boulder Gate 3 game when it comes out in a couple weeks. Uh, that one's going to be the one that sucks me in forever. I tried the Harry Potter game. It was all right. A little monotonous. But uh, that Baldur's Gate 3, I can't wait. If we're talking favorite games ever, it's got to be Witcher 3 Wild Hunts. And Red Dead Redemption 2, mm. Fallout New Vegas. I love Fallout New Vegas. I know it's it's dated now, like it's super dated now, but I love it. Those are those are my go-tos, like anytime. Or I'll just if I want something mindless, I'll throw on uh some Marvel, not Marvel, uh Call of Duty zombies. I almost said Marvel. Uh, yeah, you know, just something mindless just to kill while I'm daydreaming about wrestling spots. I can see that. I I when it comes to Call of Duty anymore, I've kind of gotten away from a lot of them because playing online, it seems like... Oh, dude, don't play online. Online's oh, hell. Don't play online. You got to listen to... The worst part of this world is people, and you got to go and listen to them. <laughs> so like, oh, you know? God, yeah. Like, if it's almost like if you don't play that game with every moment of your day that you're just stupid and... Yeah. Like, if you trigger an event that's like, oh, my God, I was trying to do this. And like, well, OK. Yeah. Like when I play the zombies game, I'm playing by myself. I, when I play Call of Duty, I don't play with other people anymore. I'll play. Oh, I'll play with buddies. But like, I can't I can't do it, man. I can't I can't do it where I'm playing and some asshole's got his music screeching to the top. I can't have a guy who's obviously ignoring his baby screaming next to him while he's playing. Yeah. His game. You know what I mean? I can't do it anymore i'm too old yeah shit. but like i love just mindlessly killing zombies <laughs> that's fun oh yeah no i i have my few friends that oh 
I haven't played it in a while, but yeah, I love getting on there and just with those guys and just, just randomly running around, just like, Ooh, here's the big gun. I don't know if they added it recently. Cause I've fallen off. Hell the la- the last game I played was black ops three. That's how old uh, of the games I'm playing. Um, but when they took out the hardcore capture the flag, I was done. That was my favorite thing. It was quick. There was an objective other than just, you know, let's just camp here and shoot guys. It was like, hey, you got to get this thing and bring it back. I, I hate where you just kind of like just run around. Some guys got some hack and he's just killing everybody. And I was like, all right, well, next thing. So. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm with you there. Now, last but not least for this category, best advice for anybody wanting to get into wrestling? Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'll okay. <clears throat> this advice might be harsh and it might not be. If you if you look in the mirror and you look like everybody that's sitting in the crowd, you need to swallow your pride and find a way to change. A lot of guys they show up and they believe that you know if I put in enough effort and enough hard work, I'll make it. And they look like the guy, they look like your neighbor. They look like a regular dude. They look like I'm over here. I'm not a terrible looking guy, but I look like basically the entire casting call of anyone from a CW protagonist show, right? White guy, short, brown hair, scruffy beard, whatever, right? So like I go and I wear makeup. I dye the hair gray. I have a whole outfit. You know what I mean? A lot of these guys, they forget that it's not just you. Oh, I've seen every wrestling move in the world. And I guarantee people who truly love wrestling have seen every wrestling move in the world. You showing up with your gear that looks like Matt Seidel doing the moves that Alex Shelley does. No one's no one's going crazy for you. You you're gonna you might get some pops like certain guys and you get some names, but once you get to a level where you're gonna start paying your bills with it, yeah. You're not going to break that glass ceiling looking like a regular dude. I'm not saying like you got to start being a mass monster and doing steroids or nothing. I'm saying like if you were to walk into a casting uh, for a show and everyone in there looks just like you, don't be that guy who just goes into the mold hoping for the best that he can outshine these other guys that are just like you. Change. Change the way you look. Change the way you talk. Change... I have to walk out like this and I'm doing my best Jack Sparrow with makeup and shit like that. You know, I don't get to talk like in my normal voice. Right. And that's because uh, Kip Saban is fucking on AEW and he looks very much like me. Or there's another guy here that looks like me or hell, I can cut my hair and, and be Shelly's uh, uh, stunt double. You know what I mean? Like you got to be able to look yourself in the mirror and uh, the mirror in the mirror and uh, and and change your look to be something that a consumer would like to go and see at a play. Yeah. Another thing I would tell people to do is start going to Vegas shows. My uh, level of entertainment has increased dramatically just by attending more and more plays and Vegas shows because they are strictly there to get consumers to enjoy themselves. That's all this is. At the end of the day, it's entertainment. Find a way to get the consumer that paid money to laugh, cry, whatever. Just get them to react. These guys go on any Twitter video of these viral videos nine times out of ten. They'll here's an awesome move. Look at the crowd. They're sitting on their ass. Oh, there's a great move. I'm glad the 38 people who are on 300 people on Twitter are retweeting it, but they didn't buy the ticket, dude. Mm -hmm. They got to see this shit for free. And they're talking about it here and there. But the people in the crowd sat on their fucking hands. Do you think you're going back? You think that promoter is making money? You know what I mean? Mm hmm. Are they buying your merch or are they just ready to go buy their drinks and go home? You know, anyway, sorry, that I, I got in a ramble there. No, no, it, it makes perfect sense because if you're just out there looking like just about everybody else, yes. you're not going to stand out. You're not going to make that money. You're not going to, air quotes, make it. Mm-hmm. If, if you got to make yourself stand out, what is yeah. going to draw you apart from everybody else? Yeah, when I when I broke in the wrestling, um, it was the tail end of the uh, Austin copycat era. Every dude had a goatee, was bald. They all came out to some form of disturbed or godsmack, and they they all wanted to do black trunks, kick punch, talk shit. And I was like, "What are you doing? You're not even as muscular as the guy. You look like just a fat trucker." 
You know what I mean? Or like you look like the guy who was in shape in high school. I can see some muscle, but like there's nothing to fucking go home and write about. You know, Austin had a six pack. You ever look back at Austin? Dude was shredded. And you, you don't even care because his, his charisma and attitude, you, and you don't you, you didn't care. But these guys don't have the charisma and attitude. They got the bald head and the beard and they think they can throw out a couple. You know what I mean? And like, oh, I'm the coolest guy here. It's like, get out of here, dude. Oh, it's yeah. The same way now. Now everyone wants to be Ricochet. Now everyone wants to be Kenny Omega. You know what I mean? If I see yeah. one more dude with a little finger, I'm going to bite their hand. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, yeah, there's there's always those areas where there's that one person that seems like everybody that's coming in wants to be that guy. They want a copy of that guy. When it's it's nothing wrong to have people out there that you like to take parts and emulate. No, no, no. But it's like take and mentors and bits. Of course. Yeah. Of course. It's like take take little bits from everybody, but mold it into your own things. Every wrestler, every wrestler that's successful has done that, right? Like mm-hmm. uh, every wrestler is like they have to take a base mold of what they know, what they're comfortable with, and, and go on. And I, 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 I was shit on the fake Steve Austin's and all that, and I'm not much different. I was very much a uh, little Shawn Michaels, you know what I mean? I was flying all around just like Shawn from '93, you know what I mean? I was just, I was just being young heel Michaels. Like everyone does it. But the problem is, is a lot of these guys they go in and they do it and they never change. I think I even yeah. made like a silly post recently about just critiquing a guy asking me like I didn't say who I just quoted what I said and he was like what is it it's like I don't know man maybe it's the fact that you've had this same gimmick for 10 plus years and you haven't put on an ounce of muscle in the same amount of time it's like is this not insanity are you not just doing the same thing over and over change for the love of god if you want to be in this business change you can't just keep the same thing for a decade the business has changed twice since then oh yeah More. all the all the people that have had that longevity of all you know had their evolutions and gone through different changes i mean hell you look Chris at jericho the, changes jericho his, perfect example as a millionaire and it's successful every time it's not because every gimmick he's done is brilliant it's because he's smart well I mean, they are brilliant but it's also because he's smart because he knows when to stop that gimmick and go on to the next one mm-hmm. right it's not no it, sometimes it's, it's just no, they got definitely. too much pride they got too much pride no it definitely all all true it a lot of people don't really realize all that stuff well that is about all I have. But before we go, where can people find you social media wise so if they don't already have their eyes on you? They can go ahead and get them there. Okay. Um, most of my behind the scenes stuff that you want to see is going to be on Facebook. Of course, no one wants to go on Facebook. It's where the old people are. No problem. On Instagram and Twitter, you can find me at PW Monster Hunter or on Instagram as Pro Wrestling Monster Hunter with the underscore in between each word. Basically, you're gonna you're gonna see uh, basically a uh, a Renaissance jacket and this weird guy doing a Jack Sparrow with gray hair. That's me. Uh, you can find, <laughs> you know what I mean. And uh, other than that, like um, I have a TikTok. I don't really do anything but repost cat videos because I'm a weirdo. Uh, <laughs> that's useless to find me. But Instagram and Twitter is where you can find me. Now, as far as watching me wrestle. Athena and I uh, own a wrestling show called Metroplex Wrestling. Mm. You're to give it a follow or a subscription. We're on Twitch, twitch.com or twitch.tv backslash Metroplex Wrestling, Metroplex Wrestling. Um, every Saturday night, we run a show every Saturday night. The only time I was able to get them to not run a show was during WrestleMania weekend because I told them, guys, it's wrestling Christmas. We're not competing. I'm not doing it. I'm staying home watching it. <laughs> we ran on Christmas Day. You know, we don't care. Um, so we run that along with our school. And then, of course, Revolver, revolvertickets.com. You can see me at every Iowa show. You can see me at every Texas show, particularly the one coming up October 14th in Grand Prairie at the Epic. You can see us at Fight Plus there if you don't want to go live. As far as the Dayton shows, I don't really go to the Dayton shows too often. I will in the future. Uh, but even still, if you don't want to see me, that's fine. Go support the Dayton shows. They're incredible. Oh, yeah. Nope. We will get all that information in the description. 
I said, that is about all I have. I hear my dogs rumbling around upstairs, so I better go check on them. All right. But anyways, thank you for taking the time to talk to me tonight. Best of luck out there with Metroplex, with Revolver, and with everything you're doing. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, Mo.